Kitty. Okay, oh, Kitty. Well, um, welcome to Book Chat. <laughs> is Gollum from Lord of the Rings. I think mine would have to be Drogon from um, Game of Thrones because he's the best one? creature ever. He breathes fire. Okay. And he's like lovable, but I not. Know. And then Dobby. 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 <laughs> that sweet little elf. Oh. And you know who is great on creatures? Kind of an expert, oh, actually. Yeah. He is like basically the ruler of where we are right now. Dark hour, like Haunted Mansion. It's Ed. <laughs> Uh, just kind of, yeah. Oh, kind of. Me too, but mine are retracted. What, like, what race of vampire are you? Well, we won't go into that. Oh. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I brought Consider it Consider me up. a damn fear. Right, if you want to go into oh, that. Okay, that's, okay. that's okay. a good race. I like vampire and be, yeah, I want to know a good damn that. And this is Dark Hour Haunted House, by the way, in Plano, Texas. So if you're ever around, you might get to see some of the cool creatures we have here. It's yeah. amazing, guys. I've been wandering around here and scaring everybody. <laughs> now, the way we approach creatures is a little differently than in a lot of the literary stuff that you guys might be familiar with. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, a creature will be more of an impetus for an action or a storyline to happen. Here at Dark Hour, we have our monsters and creatures are more the character themselves. Oh, okay. So we're about to cover the witches, so each each witch has a power. Mm -hmm. So right now we're in the room that's dedicated to our witch of transformation, our werewolf witch, who also is a gypsy, and uh, she can make werewolves and wolf men. There is a difference. Okay. And, uh, you know, so there's all different kinds of creatures that we, we have. And, you know, see some of the uh, the hunters on the wall. They were yeah. uh, they didn't look quite naked. Poor guys. <laughs> no, they did actually. I think that creatures are have such a powerful um, plot in any story or movie or TV show. Like I know that a lot of people love creatures either because they're cuddly or they're friendly. But there's also lots of creatures that are very evil and sinister. Mm -hmm. How did you really incorporate uh, both of those elements into your um, haunted house? Where are there some that you like? You know, are kind of cute, like the dragon over there, or um, do you like to make it more sinister of a feel? Well, that, that, that dragon. Skull is, is a good example. Yeah. So we'll, we'll use those something like that as a reference because we have one of the yeah. witches uh, is Ching Lung. She is a Chinese witch of dragons. Wow. So uh, she's part dragon herself. So again, that lends us to pretty much explore any of the creatures that you may want to to yeah. have in any kind of attraction. We're not limited by, yeah. by really anything. So wow. it allows us to kind of stretch it out. Each show, we do eight different shows a year and has a different witch, different power, yeah. different monsters, different okay. creatures. Oh. And so they each one of those has four usually archetypes that will lead that show. So for yeah. this one, for example, with the werewolves, you've got werewolves, you've got gypsies, you've got werewolf hunters, and you got wolf men. So in between, wow. they're, they're the four archetypes, and uh, they're and they're running around. That kind of makes it easy to follow. And uh, so we always have a bit of a story. But if you just want to come in and be scared, obviously, yeah. our creatures. Will be there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very so, well. what's your favorite type of witch that you guys have here? Boy, uh, <laughs> we have so many. <laughs> uh, there's 13 different ones. But well, Simone Noir is our head witch, and she's a demon okay. summoning witch. Ooh, so um, you'll see her in, in most of the shows. <laughs> she's your classic, you know, um, like Wizard of Oz kind of black oh, okay. outfit kind right. of witch with the, the hook nose and stuff yeah. like that, and then we have our, uh, we only have one pretty witch, and that is our Heartbreak Witch, Linda. which is in February, and oh. so she was uh, spurned, so she's cast the world of darkness, that's our Lights Out show. Oh, okay. Oh, it's kind of like a story that you're saying. Yeah. So let me actually reach out to you ladies, is what type of witch would you want to be? Oh, gosh, I don't even know if I want to touch that. <laughs> However, um, I want to be Glenda the Good Witch. Glenda the Good Witch? Can I make up a witch? As long yeah. as it's not Sandwich. Oh! <laughs> you know that joke, it's funny. I was gonna say witch of food, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wanna be like an herbalist witch that uses like, you know, elements from nature bring yeah. them towards me, and then also being like, you know, maybe demon summoning on the side. Yeah. Oh, okay, no. yeah, do something, yeah, you know, a little bit on the side there. You do have a nature witch. Oh, good. Oh, I will be her. Thorn, oh, thorn. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. How do you like go into like making it and the whole process of that? Well, uh, when we're developing a new creature, okay, there's lots of different ways you go around it. We can either think of this is the creature we want to have, and then get a story that justifies that. Okay, and in that case, you know, because 
we write all those, they're basically a story, yeah. and what each of the monsters will say and do to get that story across to a guest in all of maybe 2.3 seconds. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of things that go on, and each character that you encounter is filling a little piece of that story. Now again, if you were, we're in a haunted house, so yeah. if you want to be scared, you can ignore all that and just run and scream. But if you're <laughs> looking for a little bit of depth, we have layers. Oh, yeah. Okay? So incorporating that, that character, we can either have a character we want, or for example, for the holiday show, uh, is our Ice Witch. That, she's a Norwegian in origin, allows us to do all Ooh. kinds of characters. We have Krampuses, we have oh. we have a Jack Frost, we have White Walkers <gasps> in that show. We have oh, so Evil cool. Elves, which are our own take on Evil Elves, and more of the, the elves archaic... Elves scare me. Yeah, well, as well they should, because these elves are creepy. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, have yeah. you seen that? Yeah. So, yeah, all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> they're little nuggets. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're fun, all right. <laughs> that whole theme allows us to bring in all all different yeah. kinds of Wendigo we've got, um, you know, so all different kinds of creatures, anything that have, may inhabit a cold environment will allow us to do that. Wow, that's cool. Because I don't really think of like winter or, you know, Christmas yeah. as necessarily sinister. Or so a creature. That, that creature yeah. is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so interesting, especially with creatures like me as an author. I love creating creatures and different forms of them um, in writing, but actually getting to see them being brought forth in the haunted house like, or into reality, it's like, okay, I don't want you here, but yeah. I like you in my books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And also you were talking about how like creatures are sometimes the main like subject of like a plot and mm -hmm. plot development. Yeah. Stuff like that, and sometimes when you read books, they usually take like a back seat, but they can actually be like the forerunner. Yeah, absolutely. A, a lot of the short stories that I write, and that's basically kind of what we're doing, is yeah. a short story. And I write a lot of them outside of here as well. And so I'll have a, um, a scenario or a, a monster I want to do, like a monster of the week kind of thing. Okay. And then when you figure out what that monster wants to do, and you want to have some kind of crisis interaction. Once you figure those two, basically you just let them kind of do what they would normally do, and they write themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of this kind of thing is, is, is in a logical way. I'm okay. I know. I'm like, <laughs> in a logical way, very much the same. Just gonna. So that's okay. okay. There you go. You're good. I know. So, <laughs> so they kind of write themselves. And that makes things uh, very organic, and it yeah. makes it very easy. And as you go through, you can kind of glean that as you go through. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you'll be reacting to something without realizing why you're reacting to something. Mm -hmm. And we've given you either a pre-show that explains it, or you know that the hunters are there to try and help you. So you'll go towards a hunter character, yeah. knowing that. The werewolf is probably not far behind, for example. Yeah. Oh. So there's lots of different there's lots of different ways to kind of bring that in to the show. And you know, like in a book, you, know, you can set it up. You can tell uh -huh. what people are thinking or saying. Mm -hmm. Here, you've got to see it and see it quickly. And I also like the like the development of creatures as well. Like mm -hmm. in Sage Alexander, you know, they have the creatures like the sloth man and the crab monster. But in the new book, Sage Alexander, Blood of Seth, like they're going to go in more in depth in the world, and that's even like cooler to see the development of the characters because they are they are and they have the arc and stuff like that right. so going into a series and like being able to experience that is really cool and that's what you're doing here yeah. and with that yeah. mythos you could literally have almost mm -hmm. any character yeah which again you know brings it into you know a whole other realm of mm -hmm. really cool possibilities this has been such a great discussion yeah. I think that we're about to go into some creature making in just a yeah. second Laura do you want to discuss a little bit about that yeah so uh stay tuned because like I'm gonna get turned into a creature Ooh, even more of a creature really than you already is. <laughs> <laughs> I love you Laura I love you for you Pesker. hey guys we are back and I'm back with Ed hello and he's gonna turn me into a creature. <laughs> I'm really excited. We're in the makeup room now and there's all kinds of masks and things around us. And uh, each thing that you see in here was uh, sculpted here, molded here, and uh, painted here and finished here. Today we're probably gonna make you a zombie creature. Ooh. Okay, a zombie creature, which yeah. we, we have a whole show dedicated to that. And uh, some of the other ones we have, we have witches, we have all different kinds of things. Okay, For some cool. of those, we, we make uh, our own foam prosthetics. That's a foam latex prosthetic. Okay, and that's uh, sculpted in clay, and then a plaster mold is made, and then that's baked in the foam oven, which we have here, uh, that we made, and then uh, this gets pulled out, and it's ready to go. Your face is kind of small for this one, <laughs> so for someone your size, we would probably do a mold of your face, oh, and then okay. we could sculpt right on that, and that would fit you very wow. well. So this is made for a, a larger face person, but yeah. for example, Okay, we put that on, and you now this isn't cut out all the way. But you could see over there, and that would change your, the shape of your entire face. That's okay? wicked. So what we're gonna do today is gonna do some makeup, and uh, okay. we do most of our characters 
uh, in under five minutes if they've got a prosthetic, maybe seven. And some of our monsters we do in under a minute. If we're doing film or commercial work, of course, we take a lot more time. Some of those makeups can take up to an hour to three hours, depending on what we want to do. Yeah, and I've sat through that. It's, right? it's Fun, something. Right? <laughs> we'll do a couple of quick techniques, okay, that people at home can do. This is called um, collodion or rigid collodion. You get it from a lot of your brand uh, costume shops. And uh, if you've seen the movie Platoon, I know it might be a little old for you, but um, they had a, a guy that had a huge, huge scar. Oh, the, yeah, the gap, right? yeah. And that was all done with this. So the way this works is, this goes on your skin, close your eye, okay? And what it does is, your skin is very flexible, as most people are, and I'm gonna do it in the most flexible part of your skin, which is right by your eye. And as the shrinks, it's going to uh, pull your skin together and create a scar effect. It's also very uh, potent smelling. Yes, yes, well that's why I keep writing. <laughs> so the way they did Platoon, I believe it was like 10 different layers, and uh, each layer pulled in a little more and more, and then a tiny bit of makeup on top of that kind of gives it a nice aged look. Nice being horrible. And already you can see it's starting to dry up a little bit there. And then have you worked on movie sets where you, you did this sort of stuff? Actually, I got into haunting through special effects makeup. I was self-taught and uh, my first paying awesome. gig was for the New Jersey State Police doing one of those blood on the highway videos. Okay. A lot of gory stuff. So blood is easy. That's why a lot of people get into it. Yeah. Now, while that's drying, that's gonna, as you can see on the camera, that's especially here, that's starting to shrink up, okay? so. Zombies, depending how old the zombie is or how long it's been, you know, crawling around, mm -hmm. okay, they start to dry up and desiccate. And so that, that's one way to get that effect really quickly. Yeah. If we're not going to do a prosthetic, another way would do uh, latex okay. and some paper towels. And that gives yeah. you a very textured thing. If you're doing this at home, that's a very quick, easy way to do it. Pro tip, always put a little latex on your arm to make sure you don't have any kind of latex allergies. Oh, yeah. Okay? You might not know you have one until you have one and you don't <laughs> want to pack that on your face. So that's shrinking up pretty good. That'll shrink up a little bit more. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna give you a base. We're gonna lighten up your skin. Okay. Because uh, healthy skin is always, you know, pink and red. Yes. Okay? When you're sick, you get paler. Yes. And then you see more of the blue come through. Okay, and then if you're desiccated, you're either blue or green, depending on beautification. Mm, yummy. Okay, so here, you wanna tuck that in your shirt for me? Okay. I can feel my skin shrinking. It's yes, you can. Quite strange. Okay, you see it actually creates a divot, okay, which the, the makeup is gonna bring some of that out, oh. all right? So we're gonna do some airbrush makeup, and you can use a yes. really expensive airbrush. These are actually very inexpensive. They pour out a ton of paint. The biggest thing with airbrushes is you have to clean them all the time or they clog. These are alcohol-based paints, so our actors don't sweat them off. You can use water-based, a lot easier to get off, a lot easier to clean, but of course, if you're yeah. in a hot area, you're going to sweat you're it off. You're sweating. Okay. This is a ten dollar uh, airbrush from Harbor Freight, okay, which they have all over the country, and uh, it just pours out a ton of paint. Okay, if you can see that, okay, Ooh. okay, it's a lot of paint. Now, if you do it really quick and and smart, you can get a you can get a pretty tight little line. That's cool. Okay. Normally, we use these for mostly for basing, not detail work, unless we use a stencil. But right now, we're just going to give you a quick base. So we're going to give you a uh, a bit of a white base, and then we're going to hit you with a little bit of blue. Okay, I'm I want to make sure that that's there. Okay, now here's the thing: this is how it's going to work. Uh -huh. It doesn't smell that great. <laughs> it's going to blast you. It's cold. Okay? okay, you've got a blast of air, and you're going to start. That's okay. Okay. All right, and I'm going to when I get by your nose, I'm going to tell you to hold your breath. Okay. Got it. And I'll tell you when you can breathe again. Okay. So you don't have to do that until I get by here. Okay. okay? Ready? Okay. Here we go. It's okay. You don't have to skip. It. Okay. You do it really light. Okay. And you can see it gives it a nice even. Kind of keep your eyes closed, just normally closed. There you go. Just normally closed, there you go, you're fine. I promise I will not paint your eyeball. Okay, and as we go around, okay, it gives it a nice, even coat, okay? Now if I were to press this down, I can put a lot of paint on that face really fast. So if we're in a hurry, you'd get a heavier coat of paint. A heavier coat of paint cracks, so we want to do light, okay? Now hold your breath a second, do it by your nose. Okay, there you go, that's good. Okay, good, there you go. Okay, you can breathe. Okay, and I'm just gonna scoot around to it's this like side. A so now we've made you look a little more ghostly. Okay, mm. a little white. Okay, now we're gonna give you a little bit of blue. Okay, now where we put that blue, the white is gonna show underneath. Close that. Yeah. And again, this is a very basic, quick makeup, but you can tell already the secret to any kind of makeup is blending. Doesn't matter whether you're doing. Uh, you know, beauty makeup or, or special effects makeup. Mm -hmm. This blends as it goes on, yeah. so that saves a lot of time. Okay. There you go. That's fun, isn't it? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're actually gonna use a red, okay, but we're just gonna mist it. You can breathe. Mm -hmm. you're no, good. yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. When you're working with an airbrush, if you want to do things fast, these are stencils. Stencils are your friend. They're a very easy way to go. They make things go very fast, okay? We're gonna speed this along right now and finish this up and you'll be amazed, hopefully, how quickly this comes together. Kinda. Zombies don't have red blood anymore. What so if they eat people? Then that would be different. That would oh. be that would be this eating. Mm. We're gonna color this in. Okay. It's gonna bring attention to that definition in the crevice of your face we created. Mm -hmm. Now the scar is done. This is called zombie blood. You can get this in a lot of Halloween stores. I put mint in this because it doesn't taste very good. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. Okay, this is where it gets messy. You're gonna put this in your mouth, you can swish around and you can spit into this, let it dribble down your chin. Okay? Okay. Ready? Okay. Open up. All right, switch around. Now let's let, spit out and roll right down your chin. That's it. That's, isn't that? That's pretty. Yeah, there you go. You got it. That's really a uh, chunk on there. Okay. Good. All right, now smile off the camera. Oh, it's not even red. No, I told you. They don't have red blood anymore. Ah. <laughs> and that is. I'm glad you're such a good sport. It tastes so good. <laughs> oh, I don't know about good. It does have a flavor. There you go. I'm a zombie. You're a zombie. Can, can I do a reveal? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. No. Oh, that's scar though. Wow. Now keep in mind, for this is more for film, it's more, more subtle. When we're in the hot attraction, the lights are very, very dark. So all these colors would be much darker, okay? Instead yeah. of the light blue, I would use a darker blue. Instead of the, the light green that you see, like a mist with little lines here, I'd use a much darker green or maybe even black. Can I have some fake blood? Uh, I can do something like that, okay? Remember folks, she asked for it. Okay, <laughs> here we go, all right. Yeah, just this is gonna dribble down, so just keep your mouth closed, right? Okay. The air's gonna blow it into your mouth. Don't worry about it. It's totally not hot. Oh, okay. now I'm scared. Uh, okay. Don't, don't laugh. Don't laugh. I'll paint your teeth. Mm. Approve. This looks great. Thank you so much. <laughs> she said thank you for that. That's great. <laughs> yes, this All is right. what I've wanted my whole entire mm -hmm. life. That's pretty scary, actually. Well, in that case, here. That's what I live for. Open up. Oh, no. Open up. Why? Like, ah. It's great. You love it. There you go. That's good. There you go. Okay, now spit that out. Spit it out. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? That's great. It's actually fantastic. <laughs> wow. Go. All right, there you go. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> and you're a zombie. <laughs> Hold mm, on. That's pretty. Thank you guys <laughs> so much for watching this episode of Bunch Up. <laughs> Subscribe down below. Give this a thumbs up. And thank you so much, Ed, for turning me into zombie. Oh, I'll shake with this both hands. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's good. Bye. Bye.